made us. He's the one that makes things happen in our life. Every author has a copyright. Jesus has a copyright over our lives because he's an author of our lives. And if you don't want to approach the author of life, you will not be able to discover your purpose. Your purpose can be discovered. Acts 23, I'm reading from verse 11. But the following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as you have testified to, for me in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness at Rome. And when it was day, some of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under an oath, saying, that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. Now, there were more than 40 who had formed this conspiracy. They came to the chief priest and elders and said, We have bound ourselves under a great oath that we will eat nothing until we have killed Paul. Now, you therefore together with the council suggest to the commander that he be brought down to you tomorrow as though you were going to make further inquiries, inqu inquiries concerning him. But we are ready to kill him before he comes near. Hmm. Ready to kill him before he comes near. They went to the chief priest like apostle, like bishop. How could the bishop be, be have an hand in such a demonic, a demonic, a, a, a demonic, a, a demonic program? So when Paul's sister's son heard of their ambush, he went and entered the barracks and told Paul, "Father, bless your word." And let your people be blessed. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, some years ago, probably it's going to be like um, uh, eight, or, eight or nine years ago, I minister a word says, the, why do the nations rage? Why do the nations rage? So today, I'm ministering on a subject title, The Raging of the Hiddens. The raging of the Edens or the raging of the nations. Who are the Edens? Edens are the unbelievers. Edens are the pagans. Edens are the people who do not have Christ in their lives. Edens are the people who do not walk in the way of life, the way of salvation. The raging of the nations, the raging of the Edens. And I wanted to understand something very important. If you have never had a, if you've never had enemies in your life, maybe because you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, maybe because you are still part of, you are still part of them. But the moment you cross from the darkness to the light. The moment you give your life to Jesus, the moment you surrender your entire being to the Lord Jesus, I want to let you know that you have got an enemy. If you have not got enemy before, Satan has become an enemy to your life. His demons, he will gather his demons together so that they can be able to to do some certain terrible or demonic things so that they can cut you off. If you have never got enemy, Satan is number one enemy. I want you to all understand that. Um, Apostle Paul was formerly uh, a persecutor who <coughs> excuse me, really persecuted the church of God. <coughs> Let's just quickly look on to the book of Galatians, the book of Galatians, chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 13. Galatians, chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 13. And you will hear this the man they call Paul was Saul before. 
For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism before beyond many of my contemporaries in my own nation. Be more exceedingly zealous for the tradition of my fathers. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, and called me through his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not convert, I did not immediately convert with flesh and blood. Now, Apostle Paul was formerly a persecutor. He persecuted the church. He did not have, he, he, he destroyed, he destabilized, he, he, he killed. In fact, when Stephen was killed, he was there. And uh, he now being assigned by the council to go to Damascus to, take the, to, to arrest the disciples of Christ, to bind them, to, 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 to bring them to Jerusalem, banned so that they can execute them. And on the way to Damascus, the Lord arrested him according to Acts of Post chapter 9. It's a long story. Then after that, he took the assignment of God. Now, as he has been preaching, he kept preaching. He kept preaching. And um, he went to Jerusalem. And at, the la at last, he was arrested in Jerusalem. And he was kept in prison. Now, with the, because of the gospel of Christ that he was preaching, he was arrested. Because during that time, they didn't want to hear anything about Jesus Christ. But this man had made up his mind that he's going to preach Christ and he's going to preach him. I remember in Acts of Apostles chapter 21, verse 10 and 11, or verse 10 to 14, the Bible made us understand that Prophet Agabus, when uh, uh, took his belt, burned himself in his hand, and he just said, this is how the Jews will bind the man who, is, who owns this, uh, the owner of this belt, the man, the owner of this belt will be banned in Jerusalem. And the Bible made us understand that the brethren persuaded him not to go to Jerusalem according to verse 12. Acts of chapter 21 verse 12. We persuaded him not to go to Jerusalem. In verse 13, the pastor said, no. Why are you, why are you crying? Why are you weeping? Why are you, you why, why do you want to make me to be weary, to be sad? No. I'm not going to Jerusalem only to be banned, but even to die for Christ. So when someone has made up his mind that I'm not going there only to be banned, but to die, it means that everyone, they, they have nothing to, they can do. Because if you read Acts of Apostles chapter 21, in verse 14, the Bible said, when he could not be persuaded, we say, the will of God be done. So he went to Jerusalem, and he was banned. This man had made up his mind for Christ. If you want to kill me, kill me. I'm ready to die for Christ. I'm ready to cry for Christ. And in the preaching, he didn't do anything. He didn't commit any offense. He was arrested. And the Bible said some Jews fought more than 40 people, about 40 men, yes, banded and served together. And they stood in an oath, banned in an oath, and say, we shall not eat nor drink until we have killed Paul. That we are going to kill him. We go to lay arms and they made all, they orchestrated their own plot. How they will kill him. But the Lord exposed it into the hand of Paul's nephew. Who knew their plots. There was no reason why we have to fight each other. There is no reason why we, in fact, religion is supposed not to be uh, there shouldn't be any conflict or crisis about religion. Because one thing I know is that everybody believes that they are talking to God. But we want to know that there is a way. There is only one way. And we know that Jesus Christ is the way. We have chosen Jesus Christ. And there is no turning back. Tell yourself there is no turning back. Tell yourself there is no turning back. I want to let you know that in the way it had happened to Paul, it's still happening to the Christians, to, to we Christians, to we Christians, the children of God. People, rose, people will rise against us. People will try to fight us. 
People will try to, if possible, they want to see our hand. Why do the nations rage? Why are they angry with you? What have you done to have warranted this? The Bible made us understand in book of Psalm 2, from verse 1 to 5. I love verse 4 and 5, the latter part of it. In verse 1 to 3, it said, Why do the nations rage? What is the reason why they are raging? And the people plot a vain team. The word of God says, The kings of the earth save themselves, and the rulers, all those in government, all those that are governing us, the rulers take counsel together against the Lord, the Lord Jesus, and against his anointed, and saying, Let us break their bounds in pieces. Let us cast away their cause from us. They, what the, what the interpreter said is, let us destroy them. Let us scatter them. Let us destabilize them. That is what your enemies keep saying every day. Because they don't want to see your face. Up. They don't want to see you. If possible, they just, if possible, they don't want you to wake up in the morning. They don't want you to sleep at night and wake up in the morning. But for what reason? At times you look at yourself that what did I do for them? What have I done? What have I committed? What kind of events have I committed? Why this kind of hatred and this kind of plot, evil plot so, so, so be raging around me? Why do the nations rage? Why do they rage? Yes, say let us break them in pieces. Let us cast away their cousin us, from us. Let us destroy them. Let us destabilize them. Verse 4 to uh, Psalm 2, verse 4. He said, But he who sits in heaven, who is the one that sits in heaven? Jehovah. Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah, the God of victory. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord our banner. Jehovah Elohim, the creator of the heavens and the earth. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. The God of Jacob. The Bible says, he who sits in heaven shall laugh. The Lord will laugh at them. He said, the Lord shall hold them to derision. And verse 5 says that he shall speak to them. He shall speak Speak to them uh, in his rotter uh, and distress them uh, in his deep displeasure. God will distress all your enemies uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, to distress them means that it's going to weaken them. Uh, to distress them means that it's going to destabilize them. Uh, to distress them means that it's going to it's going to fight their coup over your life uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, why do the nations rage? Uh, why are they against you? Why are they why are they against you? Why do they hold meetings? Called Continually, in order to scatter, to destroy, to destabilize, what have you done? In so many occasions, you just say that, ah, what have I done? Ah, the servant said, those who hate me without a cause are more than the numbers of the hair of my head. Ah, they just hate you. They just hate you. For what reason? One of the reasons, and you, when, when, when you look at it, you just say, ah, but even if I've offended these people, it shouldn't have led to this level. It shouldn't have been taken to this level. It shouldn't have been taken to this level. God is saying to you today that he is the God of victory and he has come to deliver. He has come to bring victory into your home, into your household, into your life, and into your journey in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. The Bible made us understand that everything God created was good. Because when you look at Genesis chapter 1, you will see that all the six days of, God, of, of God's work, they were all good. Genesis 1 verse 4 says, God looked unto the, war, uh, unto the light, behold, it was good. Genesis 1 verse 10 says, it was good. Genesis 1 verse 18 says, it was good. Verse 21 says, it was good. Verse uh, 21 says, it was good. Verse 25 says, it was good. And when he created man, in verse 31, he said, behold, it was very good. So everything God created was good. And the Bible made us understand in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11, he has made everything beautiful in his own time. So he has made our lives beautiful. But why we are still struggling? Why all this problem? Why all this trouble? Why all this? This is not from God. I don't want to tell you, some people just hate you for any reason. Some people just hate you without a cause. But today is a day of vengeance. Because Psalm 94 verse 1 says, God is the avenger of his people. And that's why I've come today to declare to you that all those who hate you, all those who want to kill you, all those who want to destroy you, all those who want to terminate you, you will be the one to see their hand in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Can I hear the men in the house? You shall be the one to see their hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. Forty people said, we are not going to eat. We are not going to drink until we are killed Saul. We have killed Paul. We have to kill him. And the bandits of them in their hearts. You don't need me to understand that one. The understanding is that they take an order that nobody, they cost themselves. Whoever eats or drink before we see the hand of Paul, yes, such a person is under a curse or will be killed or will be destroyed. But did they see the hand of Paul? No. The, the applause, was it materialized? No. Because the Lord exposed them. He did not materialize. Everything they want to do against you will never come to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 7 in verse 7. He said, Thus says the Lord, He shall not stand, nor shall it come to pass. Some people feel that they love you, but they hate you because inside them, they have of man is desperately wicked and it's only God knows what is in the heart of man. Every evil intent against you, every evil intent against you, every evil plot against you shall not prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shall not prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 verse 9 and 10, he said, gather yourselves together, all oh, you people and be shattered in pieces. God will crush them. I said, God will crush them. And said, be shattered in pieces. He said, guard yourself together. But be shattered in pieces. Take counsel together. But it shall come to nothing. Speak the word. But it shall not stand. For God is with us. God is with you. God is with you. God is with you. If they go to the ocean to make their meeting, they will fail. If they go into the hill, they will crash. In the name of Jesus Christ, if they are under the earth, holding a meeting against you, they will never prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, hell the witches, uh, all the wizards, her and the family, or wherever they are, uh, who have traveled into the meeting because of you will never return back home. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, they will never return back. Go will cut them in pieces. Uh, their wings, uh, the Lord will cut it. Uh, their plan uh, has been frustrated uh, over your life. Uh, let me hear the man. Let me hear the man. Uh, God wants everything to be good. God wants everything to be beautiful. I speak by the authority of God. Every shrine that has been raised because of you. Every evil water that has been erased because of you. Yes, we are the take your name, your picture. We are the to you. I stand by the authority of God as a prophet of the Almighty. I say, be consumed by fire. In the name of Jesus Christ, the thunder of God will strike them down. The Lord will release his thunder fire from heaven and consume her. Every evil water, every demonic water, every satanic water, he shall be blown away in the name of Jesus. When they use your picture, your picture will not respond. I say your picture will not respond in the name of Jesus. When they call your name, the Holy Ghost will raise a standard against that in the name of Jesus Christ. We raise a standard, a standard of fire. I say the sword of fire against your enemies, against their plan. In the name of Jesus. The Bible said that Pilate and Herod, they were not friends before. But because of Jesus Christ, they conspire together. Every conspiracy that is going around you, every conspiracy that is going behind you, every conspiracy, those who are not friends, but because of you, they band themselves together to be friends. So they can see the hand of you. I prophesy this morning that they shall not prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, they shall not prosper. Psalm 16. 3 verse 9 and 10 he said those who those who those who want to see my hand the bible said though they will fall by the sword they shall go down to the lower part of the earth they shall fall by the sword and be a person for jackass in the name of jesus christ in the name, somebody say fire somebody say fire the fire of the Holy Ghost uh, will terminate uh, in 
the name of Jesus. You have not yet got to your full age. So you are going to live longer. You are going to live longer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Forty people. They banded themselves together. And then they stood in a, in a, in a hall that they will not eat. They will not drink until they killed Paul. If that is you. If that is your word. If that is what they have been saying. If that is what they have been planning concerning you. I am. I come to announce to you that the Lord in his infinite mercy who said in his word Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 8. Whoever digs a pit shall fall into it. Yes, Proverbs chapter 26 verse 27. Whoever digs a pit shall fall into it. And he who rolls a stone shall have it rolled back to him. Every arrow, every arrow, demonic arrow, satanic arrow, over your life, back to sender. In the name of Jesus, I return it to sender. I return it to sender. In the name of Jesus, I return it to sender. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me hear the man. Let me hear the man. Let me hear the man. Tell your neighbor, why do they hate you? Yes, just say, brother, why do they hate you? Why? Why? What is, tell your neighbor, what have you done today? Tell your neighbor, what have you done? We have been in the family. We have been in the community. We have been in our neighbor, neighborhood. We have been everywhere. But I speak by the authority of God. He who did not give life cannot take your life away in the name of Jesus. Who did not give you life, who did not give life, cannot take your life away in the name of Jesus. Now, let me listen to you. Listen to me, Shema. In some occasions, we just look at the preacher when he's preaching, what is he saying? If you see the way people are dying nowadays, when people in good health, we just go to sleep and they will not wake up in the morning. I'm talking about people that are even more powerful than you. I'm talking about people who know everything about Bibles. I'm talking about people that pray better than you. They will sleep and they will not wake up. And people are just dying. Heart attack, heart problem stroke this one and this one and this one whoever has assigned himself by the devil whoever the devil has assigned her to terminate you because i'm not ready to bury anybody i'm not prepared for that i don't want any funeral here i don't want any funeral no barrier no funeral no way keeping here by the authority of god all those that abandon themselves together in order to see your hand by the authority of god this year you shall be Bury them in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be the one to bury them. In the name of Jesus Christ. You shall be the one to bury them. In the name of Jesus. Say I shall not die. Say it again. I shall not die. Say I shall live. And declare the works of God. In the name of Jesus. May I say this to you. Not every prophet is a prophet. Not every prophet is a prophet of God. Some people, they spend, that is where they are spending their money. Yes, to the hired prophet, every hired prophet, every prayer contractor that is, that is holding on to your picture, holding on to your name, calling you day and night for evil by the authority of God. The Lord will release his thunder fire, thunder fire from heaven, and the fire of the Lord will consume them. Receive it! In the name of Jesus Christ. As you are here sitting down or standing or whatever you are doing, the Lord revealed to me of a woman that is watching us that jump up like this. The woman jumped like this in the spirit and he jumped and he said, yes, amen. He received it and I saw God delivering this woman from the bondage, from the bondage of the chain and shackle. Yes, let everyone that the devil has put chain and shackle into their lives be released. In the name of Jesus, you are free. In the name of Jesus, say I break every chain, every shackle that the enemies have bound me with. Say I pull it out. I break it out. In the name of Jesus, say I am loose. Now break it, break it, break it, break it, break it, break it. Break it. Break it. I want it to break it. I want it to break it. Break it. 
In the name of Jesus. Say I am loose. In Jesus. Mightily we have prayed. In Jesus name we pray. You know altar. Is a, is a place of power. Altar. Is a place of power. A place of decision. A place we have power. Yes, it's a place of power. It's a place of decision. It's a place to take decision. It's a place to it's a place of take of taking decision about even people's life. Now, in the, on this altar, all what I've been coming out from my mouth is a blessing for you. Every evil altar that is initiated against you, I use this altar as a point of contact. Maporasa Kandarabahaya, that the fire will come down from this altar and will go forth. And consume them in the name of Jesus Christ. The evil altar, the priests on that altar, and those who have taken your name to the altar, to the evil altar, may the fire of God strike them down in the name of Jesus Christ. Strike them down in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me hear the man. There is no death in this church. We are not going to bury anybody. I said nobody is going to die. Now repeat after me, every covenant of death that has been placed upon my life, upon my children's life, this hour, in the name of Jesus, I break it. In the name of Jesus, break it. Everybody, break it. Break it. Break it. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I just want you to break it. Break it. In the name of Jesus, Yes, break that deep water, break that covenant, evil covenant, covenant of death, break every coven, the coven that has been made for you, break it. See, I break it in the name of Jesus. I break it, I break it, I break it, break Jesus. in the name of Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus, mighty day we pray. Before you sit down, I want to revoke something. Let me tell you. There are so many causes. Some people, when they go to that altar, there's nothing they do than to curse. They are just cursing. They will be cursing. They will be swearing. They will be cursing. And this is the person that did not do anything, doesn't do anything against them. And they are cursing them, cursing them continually, cursing them continually. What to say? I revoke. I revoke. I revoke. I revoke. By the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. Every, curse, every curse, every spell. Every evil pronouncement, every evil pronouncement that has been released upon my life, I revoke it in the name of Jesus. Revoke it, revoke it, revoke it over your life, over your children, over your ministry, over your dreams, over your calling, over your marriage. Over your family, over your grandchildren, over your generation, revoke it in the name of Jesus. Say, I revoke it. Say, I revoke it in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Make us is the one that makes things happen in our life. Every author has a copyright. Jesus has a copyright over our lives because he's an author of our lives. And if you don't want to approach the author of life, you will not be able to discover your purpose. Your purpose can be discovered.